Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, video. And uh, this is Deepanka. So today, I have a special uh, demonstration uh, for you. And in this demonstration, we will see how we can implement an advanced form of messaging pattern in Solvers, which is request reply uh, messaging pattern. And uh, we will also see how we can implement it in, in SAP Y5 and in SAP Cloud integration. So uh, let's begin. So before we dive into the demo, let's actually uh, do a, a, an introduction of what are the different advanced messaging uh, formats which is available in advanced event mesh. And uh, then we will see that how we can implement it in the cloud integration SAP UFF application. So overall, there are largely three different messaging patterns which can be implemented in the SOLIS or in SAP advanced event mesh. So this particular chart actually or table shows that which pattern can be implemented in which of which versions. So uh, as you can see here, that there are some change uh, differences in the in the point to point as well as in the event streaming. Event streaming cannot be implemented in SAP Event Mesh, and uh, also request reply can be implemented, but with certain restrictions, and uh, there is very less support for point to point. So if you look at the publish subscribe, which is the most commonly used messaging patterns, this message pattern can itself be divided into three of the message patterns: classical, which is a broadcast scenario where one message is being dropped in a queue and then multiple subscribers can get the message, the same copy of the message. The point to point actually is can also be done. The point to point is where the number of subscribers and consumers is just one. But in SAP Advanced Event Mesh, there's one more version of point to point messaging, which uh, which does not involve persistence. So a publisher can can post a message or publish a message to a topic and any consumer can attract the message from the same topic by subscribing to it. Now this particular flavor of uh, non-persistent messaging, which is called direct messaging, is not supported in SAP Event Mesh. Only the durable version of the point-to-point -point can be implemented. Non-exclusive also can be done in both the versions, right? And uh, the focus for today's demonstration is request reply. And uh, the this actually is possible in Event Mesh, but not it does. It is not natively supported, which I mean that SAP CP adapter actually has got an SAP Advanced Event Mesh adapter. Now this adapter actually will automatically support the request reply pattern because it requires a lot of nitty gritties to be implemented for this thing to happen. But those details, those fine details, are not available out of the box in the AMQP adapter. So they have to be implemented manually if you're using SAP Event Mesh. Also, if you're using, uh, like, let's say you're using a CAP application or SAP UI5 application to connect with the broker, the Solid and JS NPM package of SAP Advanced Event Mesh or Solis is fully compliant to uh, to have the request reply message pattern implemented. Again, with SAP Event Mesh, that is not easily possible. It can be done, but you have to work manually. Event streaming is a another uh, message pattern which actually is quite different from these two. And that is exclusively available in Advanced Event Mesh. It cannot be implemented in Event Mesh at all because this requires a different infrastructure setup altogether. So in event streaming, what is happening is that, okay, there's a stream of event which, has been, which is flowing to the queue and uh, any consumer can actually kind of consume the messages um, like hours or days even after the message has been published in the queue. So there is a special infrastructure setup which is called a replay log, which has to be uh, configured in SAP Advanced Event Mesh. So I will try to create one more standalone video dedicated for this to demonstrate how this can be achieved. Okay, so these are the three message patterns uh, which uh, we can work with. Now let's see the message flow of the request reply pattern. Now request reply is an unusual term which is when we use in conjunction with event-driven uh, setups because ED architecture is all about events. And events are asynchronous by nature. So how can we implement a synchronous message flow? So Many of you might have got a hint to that particular and question by looking at this picture. So Solis, or in Advanced Event Mesh, we have to create two different queues or topics. One queue for the request and one queue for the response. Now the publishing client, whenever it is publishing any message to the queue or topic, now if you're publishing the message or topic, it is a direct messaging, which means that there is no persistence layer in, involved. So when you're publishing the message to the queue or topic, you have to enter the name of the destination queue or topic in a special header, which is called the reply to header. Now this header actually, when it will be read, by when the messages will be read from this keyword topic by this service line, it will get the name of the destination from the reply to header. And after doing the processing, it will just send the response to this reply to destination, which can be a keyword topic. Once it is available in this keyword topic, then the publishing client can continue to read from it. So this is a, a decoupled uh, scenario, which we very commonly use in JMS adapters. And same thing can be done in Solace quite easily. So what are the benefit of it? Obviously, decoupling is one of the key benefits and both the systems become fault tolerant and independent of each other. So now let's uh, dive into the demo of uh, 
how to implement it in uh, SAP UI5 and CPI. So now let's go and have a look at the SAP UI5 application first. So let me open this UI5 application. It is a very simple application, which is actually uh, a simple weather app. So you, the idea is to get the weather from any place in the planet from coordinates. So this particular UI5 application is already instrumented with the SolidFlan.js NPM package. And it is available also in GitHub. So you can download this and play around with the code to see how it interacts with the advanced event mesh queues and topics. So let me just uh, show you the, let me start this app. And uh, meanwhile, it starts, let me show you the queue setup. So if you look at the uh, service brokers here, this is the service broker. And I have created two uh, queues here. One is the coordinate queue, one is the weather queue. So the app is starting up here. So the coordinates queue will actually, uh, the publisher will publish the coordinates here. And uh, a subscriber system will read the coordinates from uh, the coordinates, get the weather of that coordinate from the Mateo API. And once the weather is available, it will push it to the weather queue. And then it will be shown in the UI5. So everything is actually happening in the, uh, in the what do you say, in this UI5 application itself. So this UI5 application itself is behaving as a, a requester as well as a service provider. So let's uh, let's actually uh, put it in action. So let's see uh, what's going on. So now you see the number of consumers is zero. So once the app has started, actually, you will see that it has actually created some subscription to these queues. So the consumers have increased by one. Now let me start, uh, try to get the weather of Berlin. So here you see the coordinates is fresh, but the temperature and the weather, it takes little time to bring because I have intentionally put in a delay. So if you look at the coordinates queue, and if you go to the settings, there is one delivery delay here, which means that every message has to wait for five seconds before it is eligible for delivery. So that is the meaning of it. Okay. So that is how it is. So now if we just randomly click on certain uh, uh, coordinates, you see the application can still work. And as and when the applications is, uh, the weathers are available, they are coming up, appearing here. And the correlation ID actually keeps track of the, of the fact that which weather belongs to which coordinates. So that is the that is how actually this UI5 application is looking. Now this is working in the guaranteed mode. Okay. Now we can actually turn on the direct mode. So once it is now connected by a direct messaging mode, it means that there will be no persistence of the coordinates. The coordinates, the moment I am clicking on it, it will be going to a topic, and anybody who is subscribing to the topic will be receiving it immediately. So there will be no persistence. So for example, if I want to get the weather of Arnhem here, so this will happen almost immediately. So this delay is just the API taking some time. So if I again go switch back to, or for example, if I go here and try to get the, the weather of, uh, so it will happen almost immediately. But if I again switch back to the direct message, to the guaranteed messaging, so again, it will be having a delay of five seconds. So let's say I click this, this. So you see there's a delay which is happening which is uh, due to that setting out in the queue. And now the message has been persisted. So just go ahead and actually you can play around with this particular tool. The Everything is mentioned in the in the GitHub. So just go and go ahead and download it. So this is how the decoupled nature works in SAP UI5 in combination with Solace. And this is how we can implement the request reply messaging pattern, making system fault tolerant and uh, a more robust, right? So this is how we can do it in SAP UI5. Now we will see how we can do the same in SAP CPI. So now we will see actually how we will actually implement the same thing in SAP CPI. The setup is same, like uh, and the and the the, the, de the design is also whatever we have done in the SAP UI5 is same. But there is a subtle difference actually in the implementation. In SAP UI5, we have created two durable queues. One is a coordinate queue and one is a weather queue. So they are both durable queues. One for receiving the request, one for receiving the response. But in CPI, uh, for the request. A durable queue we have to mention, but for receiving the response, the, the queue is dynamically created. So it is a non-durable queue. So that is the key difference between SAP UI5 and, and CPI, the way it has been done. So I'll try to explain it in more detail. So this is the iFlow, which is going to generate and publish the coordinates and it will place it in the coordinates queue. So if you look at this particular uh, adapter, the advanced event mesh receiver adapter, it's actually mentioning the name of the destination queue where the coordinates will be sent. And this setting actually is going to uh, implement the request reply pattern, convert publish into synchronous request. So this is the setting which will convert this into a request reply pattern. And what it does is that it creates a non-durable queue with a dynamic name in Solace. Okay, so we will see it actually when this happens in practice. And it will wait for 20 seconds 
for any response to arrive in that particular dynamically dynamically created queue now since this queue is of non durable nature if there is no consumer connecting to it for a certain period of time then the queue will be deleted from the broker so the response queue is only there to receive the response the moment its work is completed it will be deleted from the broker so this is the first i flow and this is the second i flow this i flow is going to read the uh, coordinates from the same queue and once it is done it will have to publish the weather back into the uh, dynamically generated queue which is created now in the slides i mentioned that sap cpi will create certain uh, special header properties now this reply to destination and correlation id is most important thing these two thing will uh, is will be dynamically generated by the receiver adapter over here and it will be sent across in every message so every message will carry this correlation id as well as the name of the destination where the weather has to be placed so now it is going to read the coordinates from the queue it will read the temperature and then after calculating the temperature it will actually place the response to the dynamically generated queue here right and you have to set this particular setting that is reply is a true and again you have to provide the name of the reply to destination and the correlation id so that it can be processed so now we will see this in action and we will also see how that dynamically generated queue is is working okay so now you see let me configure and try to deploy this package so now i have made one latitude and one longitude once i deploy this and observe the queue so now you see this new queue has been created it is a non durable queue so it won't be there in the system forever only it will be available till a consumer is connected to it the moment this queue is not connected to any consumer it will be deleted from the broker so now that is deleted because the work has been completed and now if i click here you see it has processed twice so this is the main uh, i flow which was this one uh, this is the main i flow and uh, this is the uh, i flow which actually generated the weather okay so you can see here it actually brought in the temperature for the latitude and longitude so this is a key difference now for this to happen the one very important thing is that uh, since a non durable queue is created dynamically there is an additional setting required in the clients so the client with which you are connecting uh, to the message broker so there we have to make a change so this particular setting we are actually using this client profile to connect to the broker so this setting needs to be created allow clients to create endpoints because the first i flow whenever it is publishing a message to the coordinates queue it is also generating a new durable queue in the system in the solus now that authorization is needed otherwise it won't be able to generate though that uh, durable queue non durable queue and uh, your i flow will fail so we can do it one more time so i will actually uh, try to give some different uh, coordinates so say latitude is this and longitude is this and if i deploy this so again the queue will have one new non durable queue which is created and if i refresh it so it it's also done so 9 uh, degrees uh, latitude 52 degree longitude and this is the average temperature of the day so with this uh, the demonstration is concluded and hopefully uh, you are getting a very nice picture of how to implement a decoupled scenario uh, in both cpi as well as in sap ui5 or the same can be also replicated in sap cap application as well so hope you like the demo and in the subsequent video i will try to put one more video with uh, for the event streaming so stay tuned and thank you for joining this have a nice day bye